I want to mention you know our second robot, mm -hmm. uh, Stretch. Yeah, tell me, tell me about Stretch. What's Stretch? Who is Stretch? Stretch started differently than Spot. You know, Spot we built because we had decades of experience building quadrupeds. We just we had it in our blood. We had to build a quadruped product, but we had to go figure out what the application was, and we actually discovered this this factory patrol application, mm -hmm. uh, basically preventative maintenance, by seeing what our customers did with it. Stretch is very different. We started knowing that there was warehouses all over the world. There's shipping containers moving all around the world full of boxes that are mostly being moved by hand. By some estimates, we think there's a trillion boxes, <laughs> cardboard boxes shipped around the world each year. And a lot of it's done manually. It became clear early on that there was an opportunity for a mobile robot in here to move boxes around. And the commercial experience has been very different between Stretch and with Spot. As soon as we started talking to people, uh, potential customers, about what Stretch was going to be used for, they immediately started saying, "Oh, I'll buy, I'll buy that robot." You know, in fact, I'm going to put in an order for for twenty right now. We just started shipping the robot in January, uh, after you know several years of development. Of this year, of this year. So our first deliveries of Stretch to customers were DHL and Maersk in January. We're at, we're delivering to Gap right now. And we have about seven or eight other customers, all who've already agreed in advance to buy between 10 and 20 robots. And so we've already got commitments for you know a couple hundred of these robots. This one's gonna go, right? It's so obvious that there's a need. And we're not just gonna unload trucks, we're gonna do any box moving task in the warehouse. And so it too will be a, a multi-purpose robot and we'll eventually have it doing palletizing or depalletizing or loading trucks or unloading trucks. There's definitely thousands of robots. There's probably tens of thousands of robots of this in, in the future. So it's gonna be profitable. Can you describe what Stretch looks like? It looks like a big, strong uh, robot arm on a mobile base. The base is about the size of a pallet. And we wanted it to be the size of a pallet because that's what lives in warehouses, right? Pallets of goods uh, sitting everywhere. So we, it needed to be able to fit in that space. But it's not a legged robot. It's not a legged robot. And so it was our first, it was actually um, a, a bit of a uh, commitment from us, a challenge for us to build a non-balancing robot. <laughs> to do the much easier problem <laughs> and to put to do it well. Well, because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't going to have this balance problem. And in fact, the very first version of the logistics robot we built was a balancing robot, mm -hmm. and that's called Handle. Mm -hmm. And there's that thing was epic. Oh, it's a beautiful machine. It's an incredible machine. It's a, so it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks epic. It looks like a, out of a, uh, I mean, uh, the sci-fi movie of some sort. I mean, just can, can you actually just linger on the, like the design of that thing? Because that's another leap into something you probably haven't done. It's a different kind of balancing. Yeah. So let me. I, I'd love. I love talking about the history of how a handle came about, <laughs> because it connects all of our robots. Actually, so um, we, I'm going to start with Atlas. When we when we had Atlas getting fairly far along. Um, we wanted to understand, I was telling you earlier, the challenge of the human form is that you have this mass up high. Mm -hmm. And balancing that inertia, that mass up high, is its own unique challenge. And so we started trying to get Atlas to balance standing on one foot, like on a balance beam, using its arms like this. And you know, you can do this, I'm sure. I can do this, right? Like if you're walking a tightrope, how do you do that balance? So that's sort of, you know, controlling the inertia, controlling the momentum mm -hmm. of the robot. We were starting to figure that out on Atlas. And so our first concept of handle, which was a robot that was going to be on two wheels, so it had to balance, but it was going to have a big long arm so it could reach a box at the top of a truck. And it was going to, it needed yet another counterbalance, a big tail to help it balance while it was using its arm. So the reason why this robot sort of looks epic, it, some people said it looked like uh, an ostrich mm -hmm. uh, or maybe yeah, an ostrich moving around, was the wheels, the le it has legs so it can extend its legs. So it's wheels on legs. We always wanted to build wheels on legs. It yeah. had a tail and it had this arm and they're all moving simultaneously yeah. and in coordination to maintain balance because we had figured out the mathematics of doing this momentum control. 
yeah. how to maintain that balance. And so part of the reason why we built this two-legged robot was we had figured this thing out. We wanted to see it in this kind of machine. And we thought maybe this kind of machine would be good in a warehouse. And so we built it. And it's a beautiful machine. It moves in a graceful way like nothing else we've built. But it wasn't the right machine for a logistics application. We decided it was too slow and couldn't pick boxes fast enough, basically. Oh, and it would so do it beautifully with it elegance. It beautifully, but, but it just wasn't efficient enough. Uh, so we let it go. Yeah. But I think we will come back to that machine mm -hmm. eventually. The fact that it's possible, the fact that you showed that you could do so many things at the same time in coordination, and so beautifully, there's something there. Yeah. That was a demonstration of what yeah. is possible. Basically, we made a hard decision, and this was really kind of a hard-nosed business decision. It, it was, it was, it indicated us not doing it just for the beauty of the mathematics or the curiosity, but no, we actually need to build a business that, that can make money in the long yeah. run. And so we ended up building Stretch, which has a big heavy base with a giant battery in the base of it that allows it to run for two, two shifts, 16 hours worth of operation. And that big battery is sort of helps it stay balanced, right? So you can move a 50 pound box around with its arm and not tip over. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's omnidirectional, it can move in any direction. So it, and it has a, a nice suspension built into it so it can deal with you know, gaps or things on the floor and roll over it. But it's, a, but it's not a balancing robot. It's a mobile robot arm that can work to carry a, or pick or place a box up to 50 pounds anywhere in the warehouse. From, take a box from point A to point B anywhere. Yeah, palletized, depalletized. We're starting with unloading trucks because there's so many trucks and containers that where goods are shipped, and it's a brutal job. You know, in the summer it can be 120 degrees inside that container. People don't want to do that job, um, and it's backbreaking labor. Right? Again, these can be up to 50 pound boxes, um, and so uh, we feel like this is a productivity enhancer. And for the people who used to do that job unloading trucks, they're actually operating the robot now. And so by building robots that are easy to control and it doesn't take an advanced degree to manage, you can become a robot operator. And so as we're, we've introduced these robots to both DHL and Marisk and Gap, the warehouse workers who were doing that, that manual labor are now the robot operators. And so we see this as ultimately a benefit to them as well. Can you say how much stretch costs? Um, not yet, uh, but I will say that uh, we, when we engage with our customers, they'll be able to see a, a return on investment in typically two years. Okay, so that's something that you're constantly thinking about how. Yeah. And I suppose you have to do the same kind of thinking with Spot. So it's, yeah. it seems like with Stretch, yeah. the application is like directly obvious. Yeah, it's a slam dunk. Yeah, and so you can you have a little more flexibility. Well, I think we know the target. We know what we're going after. Yeah. And with Spot, it took us a while to figure out what we were going after. 